Right, hello, it's, um, it's Dave here, I'm with my wife, Cathy. Hello. We are not going to the cinema right now. We're well, on we a train. We're oh, we train. are going. Okay. <laughs> we're getting a train to go and see It's a Wonderful Life, which we're doing in a separate podcast. Yes, but yeah. in between that, we are going to, because they've got like an hour on this train, so we are going to um, go through our top five movies of 2016, because 2016 is nearly over, yes. thank God for that. But if enough people get on the train and start maybe staring at us or making noise, we may... We may pause. Yes. <laughs> and and reconvene later. So there may be a point during this podcast where suddenly we are in our living room. <laughs> yes. At which point I will insert some sort of uh, uh, music transition. Yeah. And then suddenly we will magically be in our living room. Okay. And it'll yeah. be much hours later. But at the moment, much hours. Nobody, many hours. There's nobody near us at the moment, so let's go. All right. So um, I hope you can see my list. I so can't. we don't know each other's lists, mm-hmm. first of all. So this is going to be a little bit of a surprise. This is thrilling. Um, first sleep, <laughs> absolutely thrilling. Um, oh, there's people getting on here at Kew Gardens. Okay, hopefully they won't sit next to us. <laughs> so, firstly, I think let's try and guess each other's number one. I think that your number one is Moana. Okay, well, you won't find out until we get to it. No. I think your number one is Hell or High Water. Okay, interesting. Okay. Um, or, no, or even what? you couldn't call Captain America your number one movie of the year. Couldn't I? Right. If you do, I'm maybe getting a new co-host next year. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who's into good movies. Really? Yeah. You need okay. To make a let's few go. Adjustments here so we so we don't we can't see each other's lists. As I said, it's thrilling. Right. Go on. Number five. What you got? Okay. My number five movie of the year is Captain Fantastic. Oh. Uh, it's one actually you haven't seen. No. Um, I went along with a few friends and saw it. Uh, so Tobin and Maureen and Tom and Sarah. Hello. Uh, Tom, who's been on this podcast. Tom, yeah, Fitzpatrick, who's on the one. Guardians of the Galaxy mm-hmm. review. And we saw it in Somerset House uh, in the outdoor cinema in the summer. And it was an incredible way to see it. And Viggo Mortensen was there um, with the director, whose name I'm just looking at. Matt <laughs> 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 so for once we've prepared. We Matt Ross. Uh, Matt Ross, who... He wrote and directed this. I think it's only his second feature film. So... Um, and he is and he's also an actor and he is the um, head of the fake sort of Google company that I forget the name of in the uh, Silicon HBO Valley. Silicon yeah. Valley um, so he's a, clearly a very, very talented, talented person yeah. but this was just bowled me over it was an amazing movie it's um, you should anyone, have done a cinema if anyone hasn't seen it I will say we're not, we won't spoil no any spoilers, of these movies and we're getting through this quickly Dave so. um, but it's it's a movie about um a father, Viggo Mortensen, who who has chosen to raise his his many children, essentially outside of society in in the wilderness, um, and he educates them through books and rigorous physical education programs, and basically tries to give them a better quality of life. And then the movie is sort of a road trip where they end up going back into society for a specific reason. Okay, you're really now. You're really doing a very long synopsis. You are? Given that we're, okay. we have five gonna... each to go through, <laughs> and we're on a Basically, train. Basically, it was beautiful. It was very, very funny. It was moving, um, and it it did what movies should do. It made me question my own views on society and my own place in society, and the values that we all have that we take for granted and are instilled in us and make, makes you question those um, and so for that it was Cathy's giving me the <laughs> <to> wrap it up <laughs> I love this movie so much okay you go what's your number okay five? no I didn't sorry I was trying to discreetly wrap you up yeah so discreet um, I could hear your hands flapping <laughs> so on the funny. podcast I'm just conscious of the fact that more loads of people might get on soon right so my number five of the year and I won't go into too much detail on it because we've actually done a review already um, is Hell or High Water I love that movie and I, what I really loved about Heather High Water was that it was very fitting to the times that we live in, um, which I said on the podcast anyway. And it's you know superbly shot, superbly acted, superbly directed with an incredible plot, um, and really feels very topical given what America is going through at the moment. So yeah, that was my number five, which okay. I think is your number one. <laughs> Okay, well, my number four, mm-hmm. uh, going straight to my number four, was Hell or High Water. Oh, really? <laughs> so, <laughs> weird. So, let's continue talking about that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, it's a real snapshot of uh, America. Small town America. Small town America, and how basically how it's been affected by the uh, the global financial mm-hmm. crash in 2008. Um, and it's really, I think, in these post-Trump times, it's a real indication of why and how that happened. Yeah, it really well. gave a sense of, like, oh, why people 
are so disenchanted. Exactly. Yeah. There's a misery and a, and, a, and a sadness at the core of it. And the movie is basically, it's about, it's anti-establishment as such. Yeah. These two brothers mm-hmm. are fighting back against a bank who are going to foreclose their mother's property. And it, they're, they're the heroes. Yeah. So really, it's, it's about rebellion, which is kind of how people saw when they were voting for Trump not and to make Brexit. this all about the election no but it was it's, it's very true to our times yeah so I think it was a very good movie but interestingly very well-timed movie. it was directed by um, a guy called David McKenzie and I, I looked this up earlier in our actual preparation who I is, did as well. who I is Scottish oh wow um, so I think it's interesting it's always interesting some of the best movies tend to be an outsider's perspective mm-hmm. on things um, and certainly he, he he brought that to it mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's Hell or High Water. Okay, so back so to you for your number four. Oh, in both of our top fives then. Um, so my number four is something, again, we've very recently done on a podcast, so I'm not going to speak too much about it because, you know, obviously I'm plugging my own podcast here. <laughs> People have to go back and listen to the review. It was Arrival, um, which I loved. I'm a really big fan of sci-fi. I'm a really big fan of smart, innovative movies. And I was very much moved and um, astonished by this movie. And... You know, we did the podcast immediately afterwards, um, and we spoke to it. But, but over the next few days, I, I thought about it a lot more, and I felt that it really challenged me. Um, and I felt like I was thinking about it a lot, and I was really pondering the ideas in it, which I love. And it starred Amy Adams, who was incredible in it. So yeah, that was my number four. Okay, uh, my number three of the year was Sing Street. Oh, good, I thought it was going to be a rival. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny if I yeah. exactly one. I enjoy yeah. movies just one better <laughs> just than one you. more than me. Um, yeah, Sing Street by um, director John Carney. Mm-hmm. So he, he is an Irish director who um, I guess he's most famous for Once, which mm-hmm. I think was his, uh, his debut, which he wrote and directed. Yeah, which is um, incredible. I think he wrote and directed this one as well. So yeah, he did. Without saying too much, it's uh, set in the 80s in a school in Dublin. It's very much from the point of view of one teenager who forms a band to impress a girl. And it's very much of the time, the music and the clothes and everything. And the music that he and his band produce uh, is just so, so good. So it's good, just yeah. top notch. Um, it's a really funny movie. It's uh, sweet. It's very endearing. Um, and I absolutely loved its bits. And we have to say that. Um We've been doing the cinema since May. So some of these movies we saw before the cinema, and some of them we watched not in the cinema. Hence, us not doing podcasts on them. Sing Street we watched while we were doing the podcast, but we we rented it after it because it was a very limited cinematic release. Yeah. Given it was an Irish movie. So what you're saying is you can't listen to our re- full review. Of yeah, that. sadly. But um, Kathy will let you know all the reviews <laughs> you can listen to. Because she's um, okay, so my number three is also by an Irish director, Lenny Abramson, which is Room, and the the movie I saw with my mother you know our favourite guest yeah. Linda me and her watched it in a cinema in Ireland a couple of months ago I don't quite remember when it was released and it's really cool because it's Lenny Abrahamson which I'm a huge fan of his anyway I think he's incredible and it was written Amazing by an Irish director. woman the book Emma Donoghue so, I didn't know yeah, that yeah so it's a very much an Irish connection though it's an American story and what is really fascinating about it is that she wrote the book which I, I didn't read but I know was like very very well praised and well regarded and everyone was courting her to make this movie everyone wanted to do it and he hand wrote her a letter and in this handwritten letter explained to her everything he wanted to do with it and how much he respected her and the material and she was like right I want him and he did such an amazing job like when I was at I didn't know what to expect my mom had read the book and I hadn't and it's a it's a story about a a young boy who's born in a room which is essentially like a shed in, in somebody's garden and the reason he's born there and he has only ever lived there is because his father kidnapped his mother about four or five years ago and molested her and this child is the result of that so her and the child live in the room together and you would think that sounds incredibly grim but it's one of the most uplifting movies I've ever seen um, but talk about weeping me and my mother like you know wept and wept and wept during this and the entire cinema was just so moved it was one of those ones when the lights um when the lights come up everyone's still just looking at the movie and just kind of staring at the screen dumbfounded so yeah it was incredible um, and it was a really beautiful performance I'm pretty sure Brie Larson like, won the Oscar for it didn't she she did I yeah, think yeah um, she's yeah, incredible yeah, yeah. and the kid was incredible Amazing. so yeah anyway so interesting we both have an Irish movie at number three I haven't seen Room it's on my um, my list of movies that probably would have been on my list I've <laughs> yeah, actually been, seen it I really yeah, wanted to see it it was really incredible um, and I'm very um, excited to see it um 
So my number two is Kubo and the Two Strings, mm, nice. um, which we did review, and you can go back and listen to. Um, this is an animation by Leica uh, Studios, who did Paranorman and uh, I think Box Trolls and a few other movies. Um, but this really feels like it's their best uh, work to date. It's stop motion animation, the most beautiful stop mo- motion animation, which is almost yeah, so good you won't even believe that it was stop motion. Yeah, I didn't know that it was. <laughs> but it's a f- completely original story, um, which is very much rooted in sort of Japanese origins and folklore uh, but even within that it felt wholly fresh and original mm-hmm. and beautiful this movie is so it's so, so beautiful. beautiful I cried several obsessed. times we were obsessed with the music we've been we listened to it for weeks afterwards didn't oh, we Regina yeah. Spector does a cover of um, uh, on my guitar Jenny Weeds yes yeah. and the soundtrack is just gorgeous I've just been listening to it on repeat um, right so that's my number two okay it's yours so my number two is also animated actually coincidentally um, but I've done something that I don't know if it's cheating or not but I've done it anyway um, is that my number two is actually a joint submission so it is Moana Wait. Moana and Zootropolis you can't do a joint uh, I've done it you can't <laughs> what do you mean this is the, that's a top six then no it's not a top six that is it's a top six joint they can't be well how can they be joint second they're completely different movies they're not completely different movies they're like um, actually very similar movies and they're both from the same studio. Yeah, but they have to one hat. You have to pick one over the other. No, I'm not you picking one over the other because I almost feel that they're like kind of two sides of the same coin in terms of Disney releases this year. And I felt bad because I saw Moana very recently and did a review with my mom, and we loved it. And I raved and raved about how it was, um, you know, the most I'd ever seen from a female character in a Disney movie. And was raving so much, I forgot about Zootropolis. And to me, they're they're very similar in that they're both movies I would never have seen as a kid. Um, they're both movies which are visually stunning and create these beautiful worlds. Um, Moana is set on a Polynesian island and in that culture, and Zootropolis is completely different and set in an animal city. Um, and our main character is this rabbit that we love and she is told that she is prey i.e. she's something that would be hunted because she's a tiny little rabbit and she wants to be a police officer and they tell her she can never be a police officer Um, and it's just really empowering and beautiful and funny it was like a really 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 funny movie Um, and I guess for me that had the humour that I love from a Disney movie Moana was still funny but Moana had the music I love so ultimately I couldn't decide between them and I you know, I enjoy them equally, so they get equal weight on my ratings. Um, and I, we didn't use it. We saw Zootropolis before we started the cinema, and I've always regretted that we didn't actually get to talk about it because we just loved it so much. So yeah, I think. <laughs> okay, I'll call absolute bullshit on this. No, it's not you bullshit. You can't have two movies in the in your. Well, they got joint. As, as, as much as you've <laughs> argued your point. Um, no, and I, also, they got joint points for me. So I agree. I loved loved Zootropolis, and I think um, without harping on about the whole post-Trump America thing, that also has a beautiful message of. Inclusion. Yeah, it does. Um, and Moana, I haven't seen yet, but I do really want to see. I think it w- would have made my list. And I've made, I've played Dave a lot of the music for Moana. He knows all the songs. <laughs> and I think that's why you thought Moana was going to be number one because you heard me singing "I Am Moana" yeah, this morning. While you were making this list. Um, okay, can you guess what my number one movie of the year is? I have a terrible feeling that it's going to be Captain America's Civil War. I wouldn't do that to you. Because you haven't mentioned it yet. <laughs> no, it, that movie has not made my top five. Um, okay. Maybe it's sort of outside top ten. I mean, I do love it, but there were much better movies okay, good. And than, please. than it out this year. Um, no, it's number one is for me is Arrival. Ah, oh, okay. Um, by director Denis Villeneuve. <laughs> I don't know how to say his name. I think he's French-Canadian. Uh, just blew me away. I mean, you go back and listen to our review of it, but it was it's just absolutely breathtaking. It's beautiful. Uh, the I was in floods of tears at the end. So clever as well. It's so lovely. It's great to see, um, again, a, a wholly original movie that it's all about language and listening mm-hmm. and learning and understanding and I think particularly in the year that was 2016 yeah which you know was a pretty terrible year in terms of news very bad and it's it's the way the world is going we're all sort of becoming isolationary um, Britain's leaving Europe America is sort of well, retreating into you. itself <laughs> it's in Europe sorry yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what though the Brits would probably love if they could paddle it away somewhere and just <laughs> take, it, take it away 
Um, so to have a movie like this um, come along, it was just the right time. It was perfectly timely. And he is a, such a visualist. I thought Sicario last year was incredible. Um, the way it looked. I mean, uh, this was better than Sicario. Um, the composer whose name I forget that he works with, who's done all his movies, is an absolute genius. Yeah. And the two of them together is just a complete force of nature. Mm-hmm. So that's and uh, Amy Adams. And oh, yeah. Amy Adams was sensational in this. I think she definitely deserves a Best Actress nominee for, for, at the Oscars. I mean, she'll get one. She gets one every time she does anything. So she's basically the new Meryl. She was brilliant. Yeah. Um, okay, good first choice. Okay, so, so yours isn't Moana. So I'm going to guess that is it Kubo and Two Strings? <laughs> no, it's not. Kubo didn't make my top five. Kubo didn't make your top five? No. So you think Zootropolis is better than Kubo? I disagree. I think I enjoyed you it more. You preferred it more. I preferred okay. it. Um, That's fine. And I'm... I'm looking at I guess I look at I love Kubo don't get me wrong it could be in my top 10 but I look at um, animations in a different way than you do because I'm looking through not to sound really ridiculous but I am looking through the female lens and growing up those movies were terrible for girls so for me yeah Kubo's great but actually for me it's more important to see the characters in Moana and Zootropolis in terms of for young girls as well because um and one of the things I always thought when I was younger and it sounds really strange but it's true and I know it's true for a lot of women is that you watch when you're younger you watch something like Snow White or Cinderella or whatever you know these completely listless lifeless you know sometimes comatose characters and they're so skinny and they're so dull and all they do is serve men and it was a terrible message and I used to watch those movies when I was younger and I like genuinely thought like that I was really fat and I thought oh I should look like that and there was none of that in Zootropolis and Moana and that was only one part of it because obviously I've raved on about them anyway um, so I think for me it's really important that there's a different representation of like young girls in movies and I think while Kubo is fantastic at the end of the day you know there's lots of movies about cool little boys out there okay yeah so anyway sorry fair point I feel like a male pig now <laughs> no you're not a pig um, so my number one is actually um, Sing Street Oh, nice. Yeah, what was that? Your number five? I can't remember now. Number three. It was your number three? Okay. Yeah. It's my number one. Um, so this is one we rented and watched at home. We didn't see it in the cinema. And we're, like, it was so amazing to me to watch because it's a very little Irish cinema. Um, even, like, as we said, Room was direct, written and directed by Irish people, but um, isn't an Irish movie in the sense that it's not set in Ireland. It's not Irish characters. But Sing Street is, like, a full-on Dublin movie, Irish actors, um set in the 80s which is such a fun time to set anything um, and it was just it blew my mind it was a really short movie as well I reckon it was only about what 90 minutes I don't quite remember the yeah. duration and in that 90 minutes like how much fun we had the music was so good like I literally went off straight away and and listened to everything and I think for, for me music's very important in a movie anyway but this one was just like drive it like you stole it like there were such good songs and what they, they did, were genuinely good yeah, songs yeah they were genuinely like once like well, once also is a slightly beautiful cheesy. like once is a beautiful soundtrack yeah. even if you had never like falling slowly if you had if that wasn't in a movie that would still have been an incredible song and that won the Oscar that year and um, I mean I don't think something from Sing Street would quite get an Oscar nomination but it could do but you know Falling Slowly was romantic and deep and it had a bit of an angle that the Oscars like but I think um, with Sing Street for me I just love setting mo- seeing movies set in Ireland because it's so rare I love seeing such incredible Irish talent and I just love seeing movies that are just, just lo- you know so happy to be a movie and they're so fun and they're just embracing what they're doing and it was a perfect movie it was a brilliant script it was incredible performances it was incredible music it was shot stunningly the 80s stuff was so fun one of my favourite bits about it was you know when you're a teenager and you're you know so impressionable and he's in this band that him and his friends have started as you said and he sees like a Duran Duran video so his next song is kind of he's knocking off Duran Duran yeah. and he's knocking off the fashion then he sees like George Michael he's knocking him off whatever I can't remember who, how exactly they did it now but it was so and it was purely through that was purely visual and through songs that they did that that wasn't anything the character was saying like his hairstyle was changing his clothes were changing it's beautiful and it just shows how fickle teenagers can, yeah, can be yeah brilliant but um, importantly as well it's set during a time of economic depression Mm-hmm. in the 80s in Ireland which was the um, sort of last big recession so it does have echoes to today's today's world it's not post-Trump though you can't you can't shoehorn that into this <laughs> no I'll leave that one be um, but it's just a testament to like the power of music and yeah, how that can so bring people together and overcome 
um, a lot of people missed it this year I mean we missed it if, if, if it had a release in British cinemas it was, it was so it minimal it did it was, was uh, it? there was posters for it in the tube we just missed yeah it. I just missed it it, was, it wasn't something I knew about so we rented it um, and even my family in Ireland I want them to watch it and they haven't seen it yet they missed it in the cinema so it was one of those things because and, and probably partially because they didn't have like you know a big name in the cast which tends to kind of help movies like that um, so yeah that was my number one of the year I loved it I'm definitely, I am might actually watch it over Christmas with my family who haven't seen it and I just made me smile because you know 2016 really isn't a great year like, when you look back on it um, including for movies like we I was struggling I would have struggled to pull a, a top 10 together to be honest um, I don't think it's I was been struggling the best as well it hasn't been there, like the, all these movies that we're mentioning are incredible and pleased to go see them but there wasn't a whole lot out there and if you look at the top 10 movies uh, worldwide box office it's all sequels and reboots and um, yeah and all Disney it's all Marvel and Disney yeah top 4 yeah. top 4 worldwide gross um, movies at the moment are all Disney owned mm-hmm. so it really is we're in a time where corporations I know. are taking over uh, what other um, so that's our each of our top fives very yeah, quickly yeah so very similar lists actually but very quickly yeah. let's let's run through some sort of things that just didn't make the couple we think are worth a mention ok will I say mine yeah fire away so I wanted to make a notable mention to Deadpool because as you know I'm not really into superhero movies and I'm sick of them all but Deadpool I loved it and it was really fun and yeah, so for me, I wanted to mention Deadpool, That's on so my people list don't well. think that I'm completely <laughs> miser about those kind of movies. I wanted to mention Kubo, which we've mentioned already. I wanted to mention Bridget Jones because, for me, you know, I, I loved it. I really enjoyed it. It was so fun to see those characters again, and I love a big female event movie, which that was. It's still our most popular episode. Yeah, it was our shot. most downloaded episode ever. Um, so yeah, Bridget Jones is definitely a notable mention for me. Another notable mention, notable mention was um, a bigger splash which we saw earlier this year with um, Tilda Swindon and Ray Fiennes. That was good. Yeah, that was. Uh, it was really different and weird. It was a beautiful um, art house movie and stunning. He know. is tremendous. He's in tremendous that. in it. It's like one of his best performances. Um, so yeah, that's definitely notable mention for me and I recommend people. And Tilda Swindon manages to be the most incredible actress whilst not speaking at all. Sorry, on that note, um, I don't have this movie on my notable mentions because um, I think it has problems. But so no, you're going to no, bring it up anyway. Notable scene from a movie is Ray Fiennes Ray Fiennes Hail Caesar, Caesar yeah. um, the, the one of the funniest scenes of the year yeah. or of any movie is him and uh, Would the Al, Alden so I, I don't know <laughs> what the it was so simple yeah. and Tilda Swinton was in that as well yeah, she was so I mean, that, they're incredible that's together. an interesting movie it's like a series of shorts more than anything yeah. it doesn't quite hold together um, and then my last note of mention is 10 Cloverfield Lane loved it yes. such a good movie I don't think we did a podcast on that either did we um, no, no, but that was that was, it was a real incredible surprise. Yeah. That was, it was great fun. Again, you know, actually, much I love like those room, claustrophobic sort of yeah. bottleneck movies. All set in one space, really funny, like really, really funny, incredible Creepy. performance from John Goodman. Yeah. Um, all three of them. All three of them were incredible. So yeah, um, I loved Ten Club of Lane. So that's an honorable mention, though I wouldn't put it in my top five of the year. Okay, so I had. Um, Deadpool and Ten Cloverfield Lane on my notable mention list as well. I had Zootopia in there. Um, or Zootropolis, depending on what title you're looking at. Yeah, one of those American ones, UK. Yeah, I, I can't remember, remember which, which one which. is ours. A um, few other movies. I thought Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was really, really good fun. I just smiled through all that movie. It's just great, great family entertainment. Yeah, it's funny really though because it was. It. I mean, I enjoyed it afterwards and I gave it a decent review, but I've completely forgotten it now. I don't think. I, I'd, oh, I'd I would revisit it. Again. It's just magic, pun just intended. Um, <laughs> Captain America: Civil War is is on there. Kathy's giving me the face. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't mind that you have it here. Absolutely geeked out. I absolutely love that movie. Uh, the Jungle Book, which was our first ever oh, cinema. Yeah. Um, about that. that was really, really well done. I think a real, a real surprise. Yeah, I, love I don't think that. we were expecting much. No, from that. Disney had a phenomenal year. Yeah, really. yeah. I know they're just owning it. And there, and Rogue One. Um, they is not on my list, um, but they they on that as well so yeah. think of think of all the money they're making this year um, and I think that was yeah that's kind of it for my notable mentions ok, okay so speak. next we were going to say most, dis- most disappointing yeah which was a nice segue mine was Rogue One uh, <laughs> yeah I guess that which I was really looking forward to but um, you know see our last episode for my big old rant sadness in Dave's eyes as he speaks about it <sighs> yeah something to behold I just wish I'm, I think I'm sad because like Everyone I'm speaking to loved it and just is getting a huge kick out of it. All the critics are loving it, so I feel like I just feel like I'm missing out. Well, I feel like I I had a thought yesterday, which was that if you if none of the other prequels had ever been made, 
and if this movie was sold as a prequel you would have loved it I genuinely think you would have I think it was just we've already seen three prequels and this was supposed to be something different and I think that was kind of the main problem with it yeah maybe I think maybe if also if I was 15 yeah. it would have done it for me um, but I need more from a movie yeah. these days um, so it just wasn't enough what was your most disappointing oh so I thought most disappointing was a list so I have four of them am I allowed to mention them oh fine okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not cheating so my most disappointing I have Star Wars as one of them yeah um, not that I was expecting much but yeah, I was you more disappointed but I was disappointed on your behalf actually oh thank you very loyal wife <laughs> sympathy um, but also you know I did think it was better last year so I was hoping for a bit more um, my other one that you've mentioned already actually but Hail Caesar for me was most disappointing I just love the Coen brothers and aside from that scene with Ray Fiennes which is like one of the best scenes I've ever watched it was just a mess of a movie it was and it had such potential it was like set in old Hollywood it had this incredible cast it obviously has these amazing directors but it was just a mess of scene upon scene that didn't you know it was almost like a series of like vignettes or something it didn't didn't pull together as a movie at all and do you know what like we've seen what they can do you know Inside Lou and Davis is basically my favourite movie of all time um, I'm just such a huge fan of theirs and this really let them down and I think I it let the actors down who were in it as well because their performances were better than the movie was it's just not the sum of its parts no. even though it had amazing parts and, yeah. and, and, and well the Channing Tatum musical Channing Tatum was, was really fun again in isolation they were all great but, and actually the plot which was most advertised and which was kind of in the title art was the George Clooney plot which was shit really bad it was one of his worst roles I've ever seen him in um, so yeah, that was my in my most disappointing. My other one was Independence Day because I was oh, like yeah. genuinely Forgot excited about, about like as in I was like pumped for this. <laughs> <laughs> so that was devastating for me. And then also one I have reviewed before again with my mom was Everybody Wants Some. And the funny thing is, at the time, I was disappointed because I loved Boyhood, right? And um, so it wasn't Boyhood and. But I didn't mind it, you know. I was like, gave it a relatively good review, I think. But subsequently, since since we watched it, I've now gone. We've gone and watched them um, before sunset. Before sunset, yeah, which, which was we hadn't seen. Amazing, it was incredible. I love it. So now I'm like, wait a minute. So he made before sunset. We also watched Days and Confused recently on the same night. On the we same watched night. before sunset and Days and Confused back to back, yeah, and we we'd never seen either. Double bill. And look, Days and Confused is more in the lines of Everybody Wants Some, and I know it's you know considered like the sequel. Uh, the prequel even to this but yeah after what you know after knowing what Richard Linklater can do retrospectively I'm hugely disappointed with everybody wants some because it was just a load of bros like doing beer pong you which know. is kind of what Days and Confused was it was yeah well. it I was mean I wasn't a fan of Days and Confused when we watched it yeah there wasn't much to it but it's like but you can do Boyhood and you can do Before Sunrise so actually everybody wants some if I was to go and view it now I'd have probably given it a worse review Um so yeah, and then we wanted to make mention a couple of movies that we haven't seen. We we just haven't because you know we're not professional film reviewers and we don't get to go to the cinema as much as we want to. And we wanted to mention ones that that we want to see and that would and probably that be on would our probably list. be on the yeah. list. So for me, I've already mentioned Room and Moana. Mm -hmm. I feel like they would be strong contenders for me. I don't think really you'd probably have put out. Moana in your top five though. No, given you did Heat Kubo. Um, the other one for me is La La Land, which yes, is that's just, on my list. I think it's actually it might not even be out in the UK yet. It's out in the but States though, and people here have seen it because it's been out, it's been around since May, since it was doing the festival circuit. So I know people who've seen it, and it's just annoying that they haven't released it in the UK this year because I really want to see it. Um, yeah, so I guess it will be in like the best of 2017 yeah, for us, even though it's a 2016 movie. What else you got? Is that all you had? <laughs> That's it for me. So I had I Daniel Blake. Oh yeah. Yeah, which I really amazing. wanted to see and didn't get around to doing it. Um, which is oh, an incredible that, British um, movie, apparently. What's that zom uh, the zombie one? I really wanted to see that. Um, with uh, well, clearly it's not on your list because you don't know what it's called. <laughs> it's an English. It's I an know English the one you're talking about. With but Gemma I don't know Arterton, what it's um, like. I think we need anyway. to edit this out. You're ruining our. For once we're pla for once we're <laughs> organised and have notes. <laughs> Um, I know the one you're talking about, though, and we, we wanted to see that, but we couldn't get to it. Um, so I've got I, Daniel Blake, which is apparently an incredible movie about homelessness. The girl, in, sorry, The Girl with All the Gifts. So now you've interrupted me twice talking about Daniel Blake to talk about a zombie movie. This is apparently an incredible movie that highlights homelessness in Britain. Um, so we missed that one. We missed, what's the one you want to say? The Girl with All the, the, girl the Gifts. With all the Gifts, which is a zombie movie that Dave wanted to see. Um, La La Land was also on my list. And the other one I have is Edge of Seventeen. Oh, which yeah, is that's apparently to be good. Um, the Breakfast Club for this generation. That's Haley. Um, what's her name? From. Um... Wow. 
I don't know who it is. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't going to say because Jeff I don't Bridges know. From the Jeff Bridges Brother movie, and True no, Grit. True Grit, yeah, because there's nothing worse than us just Hayley you know, Atwell? surmising no. about names on the podcast, which we tend to do a lot. Yeah, so my haven't seen, but wish I'd seen, and would probably be my list would be I, Daniel Blake, La La Land, and Edge of Seventeen, because I do love a good TV movie. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the final we wanted to say is worst movie of the year. Yeah, I think probably the worst movie I saw this year was ba- Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Okay. Um, which I actually came out of with a, a friend of mine, and we both kind of got a kick out of it, but for the wrong reasons because it, it was so bad. So bad, it was kind of bizarrely enjoyable, but also it was boring and terrible. Um, it's just a complete mess of a movie. Like, there's no way you can. Like, oh, hello. Oh, this guy. <laughs> play, play us off. <laughs> there's, a, there's a busker on the on the train. Um, right, I'll quickly say my last. This worst is actually a great background to it's Batman v Superman review. Um, right, I'll quickly say my worst, and I don't need to say anything more about it. It was Independence Day. I walked yeah. out. I, you know, I did walk out of the movie, so I didn't see the whole thing. Um, actually, but, I think. Shit. I think. Probably that was a worse movie than Batman v Superman, yeah. to be fair. Um, but Batman v Superman should have been a lot, lot better. Yeah. Um, so, so Batman v mess. Superman wasn't in your um, disappointing list. No, because I was absolutely expecting it to be bad. Okay, and so because the trailers Day, were awful and Man of Steel was bad. Yeah, so Independence I, Day made both my most disappointing and my worst list. Independence Day was a complete <laughs> pile of garbage. Okay, so like, let's it was just, just um, a fucking mess. All right, let's just record some of this nice hey. music. Then. Oh wait, he's finished. <laughs> um, okay, we'll get off. We're nearly at our destination. We've got some nice music, and yeah, so just wrap up of the year. We're really pleased we launched the cinema this year. We love it, and um, thanks for listening. And thank you to everyone who has written into us and given us encouragement. Um, it's we're we're having great fun doing this, and we're going to continue doing it in 2017. Um, if you aren't already following us, keep an eye on our um, Twitter at the cinema let us know what your favourite movies were of the year and um, yeah see you in the new year bye Merry Christmas Talent.